tangu sasa hii kitu anamia yote unaona na kula mpaka okay, wewe unamanya moto tu video hizi zindano sitakanga sitoke when this mzungu brought this plant here he forgot to drink In the vast plains of Laikipia County sits a small town called Doldol, largely occupied by pastoralist Maasai communities. Over the years, the semi-arid area has become home to an invasive plant, the prickly pear cactus, scientifically known as Opuntia stricta. Animals feed on the cactus and through their droppings, they disperse the Opuntia seeds. The fruit is covered with small spikes which injure the mouth and the entire alimentary canal of livestock. Sometimes wounds get infected and lead to the death of these animals. William Masconte, a livestock herder in Doldol, is still counting his losses. <laughs> Ngoma pusi 60 juzi last month. Sababu ya bundi hii inadunga buku. Na huo mdomo. Mpaka pusi hivi furuta nyasi kama hivi sikula. Oh tuko na shida mingi sana. Mpaka yosho na majumoto tu video. Hizi zindano zitakauke stoke. Unaona kama hizi. Hii zina hizo kata sina dunga. Grazing the animals has become tedious for him. Pusi kiingia hapa sahii ndani kutoa inakuwa ni shida. Sababu ime imeshika ground kabisa mpaka sasa hata jiapo na the Opuntia bedevils a difficult situation. Pastoralists in Laikipia are having a hard time already due to climate change and increased private wildlife ranches which take up grazing land. This has been the cause of conflicts that have led to loss of lives and properties. This cactus is now adding salt to injury as it now occupies thousands of acres of grazing land. The cactus is native to the Americas but has spread as an invasive plant around the globe. It is believed that the arrival of the plant in Kenya was a colonial misadventure. Lack of a natural predator for the Opuntia is one of the reasons it has continued to thrive, says environmental expert Francis Merini. You know the, the food chain, everything that exists has something else that feed on it. So when this Muzungu brought this plant here, he forgot to bring the predator because it was never a native of this area. So since it lacked an alternative organism to feed on it, it blossoms and occupied all our fields. But people here in Laikipia have found ways to mitigate the impact of the Opuntia. A natural predator of the Opuntia was imported from South Africa and has since been introduced in the area, the cochineal insect. We initiated a biological control mechanism by introducing a cochineal insect, now the predator to this plant. The Twilight Enable Women's Group, located at Ilpole, is in charge of the cochineal project. The group, consisting of 203 women, led by Rosemary Nanini, was formed to empower women in the area. Tala is a women group. It's an umbrella of six subgroups of women from two community lands, Ilpole and Munishoi. So we own uh, 40 acres of land, and it's within the 40 acres of land that women do their activities. Owning land came with the responsibility to care for the environment. <laughs> an issue of cochineal also was introduced, and we are able to make uh, three greenhouses owned by our members. Margaret Mamai is the caretaker of one of the greenhouses owned by Toilet Enable. Here, they rear the cochineal insects on fresh opuntia parts in the greenhouse until they are completely infected. They then place the infected opuntia in the fields so that the insect spreads, a more environmental friendly method than chemicals and also more cost effective. <laughs> Personal loss has fueled Mamai's desire to religiously reinfect the cactus every month. 
tangu sasa hii kitu anamia hata karibu elimu moja sababu kutanganya mgusi na ngombe mtoto kusaa tribi hiyo inakuwa kubwa sasa ile bado kidogo hivyo hii hawezi kula haraka washa tu akue kubwa hii washa washa yote naona na kula in the best case they end up with this a pile of dead cactus the insect doesn't feed on other plants so once the cactus dies so does the insect but other than the biological control method community based trust like kipia permaculture has found alternative use for the cactus as joseph lentunoi explains it grows by two ways one through the seeds the animals the wildlife the people eat it and then as they go and pull down there they leave the seeds to grow because it's really very hard seed even if it goes in a ruminant stomach it doesn't really die off so we decided to bring in a machine that grinds the seeds to make oil the oil can be used in the cosmetic industry the other way this cactus grow is through the the leaf or the pad if you like we try to get a grinder that grinds completely the pad then you put in a biodigester then you use it you produce methane gas for cooking in that way that matter they provided a biogas digester to twala women which is their partner to produce the biogas the women first cut parts of the cactus from the fields they then proceed to cutting it into smaller pieces before putting it in a grinding machine The byproduct is then fed to a biodigester which produces methane gas and this can be used for cooking. The benefit of this uh, biogas is for the cactus is uh, one it conserve environment since you cannot get the cut uh, firewood again. It also saves more time for the women because um, once you have the biogas when you feed one you can use it for 4 to 5 days without going back and again are bringing the cactus. The other advantage is that it also reduces the invasive plant that dominates the land. The purplish fruits of the Opuntia cactus also have alternative use. The pulp is used to make various products. You can make jams which is very very nutritious. You can make juice, you can make anything else. Joseph's hope is that the population of the cactus will reduce while people still make money from it. And while it's still an uphill battle, The measures have shown effect so far. But the various solutions offered to curb the Opuntia menace have however not been without challenges. The biogas system that was brought by permaculture from Nairobi was very expensive. Costed around 300,000. So we will only bring it into an institution like this one with an intention that um, maybe uh, we we can get uh, uh, more funding to propagate or even to make more homes utilize it maybe schools uh, other women groups like this one to, and eventually you know even get into the households local households that is our dream reinfecting the cactus is also no easy game because these are very minute or small organism the winds carry them when it rains the, the service run off transport them and kill them so we need that after every rainy season we reinfect the parts of the cactus with the cochineal. Marini maintains that the best weapon yet is the cochineal insect. I think the long-term solution it is the natural solution which is scientifically proven the introduction and proper management of the cochineal insect which is its natural predator. Ladies like this uh, boma who are serious into this they need help they need support. The hope is to spread the cochineal insect to other affected areas in the country to achieve what the Twala Women's Group has achieved.